Let us bow our heads in prayer as we think about how far God has brought this organization from humble beginnings to an international force the workers' justice. The roles of Charlie Hayes and Adam Wyatt and Jim Wright and Diamond and Simon for the ball. Those who refused to surrender, Nelson Jack Edwards. We thank you today for allowing us to still be here on this case. Thank you for Brother Bill Lucy, who has given the ultimate measure of his devotion to make this day possible for us, Brother Melvin, and all who care enough to pause long enough to express our thanks to thee for being the God that you are. For those who need a job and can't get one, for those who have a job and can't get paid, for those who have denied their promotions based upon race, have mercy upon us. Give us the strength and the vision to fight back until the bright morning of justice doth appear. Amen. Amen. It is a joy to be home today at CBTU to express my thanks for such a profound, serious introduction, Brother Melvin, to my friend and Brother Bill Lucy, the extent to which Mr. Randolph has a a living legacy is embodied by the work of Bill Lucy. Mr. Randolph said we should get organized. Bill Lucy organized us in his time. No one did more to position labor in the struggle to free Mandela in South Africa around the world than Bill Lucy. <laughs> Senator Bill. Thank you, Bill. Put your hands together like you mean it. <laughs> Sister Cleola, my fellow Geechee from South Carolina, <laughs> and all of you who are here at this critical hour, there are some assumptions about this meeting as I think about its founding the fear that Dr. King and Rosa Parks began, along with the Montgomery Improvement Association, Montgomery Bus Boycott, the first $10,000 came from Addie and Charlie and the Amalgamated Meat Cutters. The Teamsters sent dr trucks, food, and clothing there. All of these struggles we have coexisted down through the years. And Jim Wright became regional director of UAW, was, he became a national hero. Charlie became the first congressman, labor leader of the last century. Back in the day when it was very difficult for us to talk about organizing labor beyond labor, back when Bob Simpson had black hair, back in those days. I don't want us to forget why there are not many cameras here today. Because there's an assumption that we're not going anywhere. Cameras follow people. Mm -hmm. There's the assumption we're not going to disturb anyone. We're just going to talk and walk, eat and shop. Uh, and George, that's not newsworthy. I'm going to challenge us today to make some bold actions driven by our own identity. I was glad to hear the leader speak of the Latino dimension of our coalition. We need not fret fighting over who's going to get the crumb, the black or the brown. The 100 largest cities are majority black and Latino. We are each other's future. separated by language, 
but bound together by message. I say separated by language, but bound by message. There are more Africans south of the border, more than north of the border. Brazil is 55% African. So Afro-Mexicans, Afro-Colombians, every country. Slavery ended on certain days. Most of them ended before 1865. Separated by language, but bound by message. When Tom Brander ran for mayor the first time and didn't get the Latino vote, he lost. Next time he got it, he won three times in a row. Willie Nareb ran for mayor of Denver, majority in Latino city. Got the Latino vote he won, and Pena won because the black and brown found common ground. Harold Washington ran for mayor. He said, if you would get me 10% of the white vote, 80% of the black vote, 50 plus one Latino vote will win, he won. Same is true for Dave Dinkins, same is true for Barack Obama. We are each other's future. The immigration policy is not just for Mexicans. It's also for Haitians. It's also for Africans. It's a comprehensive immigration reform. <laughs> Dr. King's last staff meeting, January 15, 1968. Bill, you were part of that. He convened uh, some Jewish allies from New York led by uh, Al Lowenstein, some labor leaders, some blacks from Deep South, some Native Americans, some Appalachian whites, some of Shaw Business Group out in the Southwest, preparing for a poor people's campaign based upon need and not divided by race. We on our way to Washington to engage in civil disobedience parent to go to jail to force the Congress to put a focus on poverty, the plight of working poor people, to end the war in Vietnam and revive the war on poverty at home. We argued that bombs dropped in Vietnam would explode in our cities because of neglect. And there was something in the Baltimore of that day called the Colonel Report. Here we are today with Dr. King still crying out from the grave, organized this coalition. One reason the South is so upset about the Latinos coming across the border is that in states that were 29% black and 70% white, the Latinos is close to 50-50 in many southern states. Blacks and browns in the South, a handful of white labor, represent the ability to stop right to work laws in the South. The dynamics of immigration, Latinos coming across the border, and Asians uh, coming across the border, the Pacific Islanders, a rainbow coalition that is our future. I want you to know that January, June 20th through 24th is the Rainbow Push Annual Convention here in Chicago. On the 23rd that morning, I'm urging you to be a part of it. because so I'm gonna call you today, today for a date of action and challenge, and I hope we will make that labor meeting distinct by our actions and what we plan to do before this summer is that we don't need to wait for another Baltimore attack. We can have our own Baltimore for justice, not in reaction. Labor, labor's challenge is to address the black economic crisis of our lifetime. We're somewhere clearly between the joy of yesterday looking back and the hope of tomorrow. But our struggle is not in the joy of yesterday, not the hope of tomorrow, it is in the this day, our daily bread. This day in Baltimore, this is not just the absence of riots, issues in Baltimore there 18,000 vacant homes and abandoned lots. That many people losing their homes, the banks that got bailed out, and the people got left out, they closed the drugstores and the grocery stores. If you were to put window panes where there are now boards, 
You'd have jobs just replacing boards. You'd have jobs removing lead paint. You'd have jobs painting. You'd have jobs for roofers. You'd have jobs for those working in every dimension of trade. Did you, Baltimore today has 4,000 policemen? 80% don't live in the city. From as far south as Virginia to as far north as New York. They get the nectar from the flower and so the pollen elsewhere. There are no honeybees. There are no honeybee brain surgeons. There are no honeybee brain. They operate by instinct, by buzz. Honeybees have enough sense in their instinct. When they get nectar from a flower, they don't just fly away. That's it. When the nectar is how it gets its joy, its gratification. It doesn't just fly away and drop pollen in some layers because if it flies back, if we didn't drop pollen, the flower would die and the honeybee would die. So the law of regeneration made you drop pollen when you pick up nectar. If 80% of the police and firemen and teachers drop pollen when they, they kill the flower. Would you rather have a house in the suburb or have a whole city? Is it about a house or about controlling a city? One side of town, 35% unemployment. Does it matter? Why is downtown flourishing in Baltimore? All the TIF money is downtown. Labor pension money downtown. Bank money downtown. Private equity downtown. So one side is green and flourishing. One side is parching. Downtown there's subsidized stadia for the Orioles and for the Ravens. We have big fun. People come in and pay us a visit for three hours on Sunday and go on back and while we subsidize their trip, we get upset the whole ballpark stops. We're more central than we realize. So that who is going to take the lead to say let's rebuild 18,000 vacant homes? We bring in the Department of Justice as if the police is the issue. The issue is what, where's HUD? Where's housing and urban development? Where is Secretary of Labor job training and job skill training? Where the unions that are allies, brothers of another mother who took the, the headquarters outside of the city and will not train our youth to be able to lay a brick, they can only throw a brick. Where are they? Where are our allies? As we reveal our cities, all of them are like holes of donuts. One side of town, you have these holes of donuts. Chicago, here we are today. Lundell and West Side and out south, Inglewood, 35% unemployment. Downtown where we are, 3% unemployment. Job looking for people. Suburbs, job wanted signs. One side of the town, you have the Cubs and Northwestern and Paul and the great hospitals have trauma units where there is no trauma. Other side of the town, you have 50 public schools closed, 140 schools without a library. When 50 schools close, 5,000 teachers lose their jobs. Teachers can't work, and then the, we close 50 drugstores. 75 grocery stores, close the trauma units and hospitals. Maybe our allies on the other side of town, maybe they can tolerate this pain. We shouldn't. If we act, something's going to happen. We might get followed. We can be minorities with a majority vision. We can think bigger than our skin. 
what made Moses and Jesus and Mandela and Dr. King akin, where they were all minorities with majority visions. We can look bigger than our predicament. As a man or a woman thinketh, then so are they. I'm rather convinced that part of it clearly is an identity crisis. We are members of labor. We are mostly black who choose to work with labor because of, it, of, of our shared interests. Oh, how can I put this thing? Labor, as we knew it, did not lead the march to abolish slavery. Frederick Douglass was not a labor leader. Neither part of the call for a march on Washington in 1941, that was Randolph. Neither party subsidized the Montgomery bus boycott. Neither party came to Birmingham for the boycott or the Selma for the march. They followed us because we were going somewhere. Minorities can have majority vision. We can think bigger than who we are. These numbers are typical of this urban donut called urban America. There is no policy to address these issues. Whether it is in Baltimore or Detroit or Chicago, does it matter to you that where we live they're closing hospitals, George? Does it matter to you that where we are they're closing trauma units while trauma is rising? Does it matter to you that if we rebuilt what the banks tore down, we could put more folk back to work than we have workers? Does it matter to you that our children cannot learn to lay a brick, cannot be trade skillsmen? Who is to lead them? CBT was called to be bigger than just, you were called to lead the whole movement. We were called to lead, not to follow people who ain't in no hurry to go no place. Who's going to meet with the Secretary of Labor? Harold Washington became mayor and all the trade skill unions went to the suburbs. Where's the pension money? Our money. Where's it being invested? Because we can't organize. Where's our money? One side of town has pension monies and Investments and private equity and banks, TIF money is flourishing. That's true in downtown Chicago, the Magnificent Mile. Try Magnificent your way through Inglewood. <laughs> Try Magnificent your way down Martin Luther King Boulevard and Malcolm X Street. Try that. And the challenge is that it's, it's one thing to be hung, but there's another thing to finance your own rope. It's our money. How much pension money is in your union? Where is it being invested? Who's on the pension fund board? Or can they keep telling us that we are not qualified, that, that where we live is, is, in, is investment unworthy, they spend our own money? Back up, wait, 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 wait. Where you live is investment unworthy of your money. Why would you save it in the first place? I wish I wasn't here by myself this morning. I know y'all got it. In this talk, there's TV covering different people saying this and that on the TV and all that. No one mentioned Connor Report. They mentioned hope. They mentioned faith. Faith and hope are spiritual. Neither has a budget. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith doesn't have a budget. Hope, it is the substance of the matter. Don't just send someone to town to us to be quiet. Quietness is the absence of noise. Present peace is the presence of justice. Quietness. We don't want to be quiet ever again. <laughs> Quiet. 
quietness is the absence of noise, peace, the presence of justice. When we in the boycott being quiet, in Montgomery, we did not get the right to vote being quiet. Those who are quiet betray the dream. The dream is the dream of substance and substance and, and risk and sacrifice. We were in Selma, sir, down there, Clay, and I was walking around with the attitude. <laughs> because we were down there celebrating and should have been demonstrating. We were down there looking in the rearview mirror and not looking in the windshield. The 1870 Voting Rights Act, 251 years of slavery. We left the slave masters in charge of the Voting Rights Act. Those who had been slave masters were in charge of the infrastructure of voting implementation. And they killed it. Why were they upset? Why were they more angry at us than slavery? Because when, when you had a one-person slaveocracy, that one person represented everybody. When slaves could vote, you had a hundred slaves, one person, one, one slave master, the power went to the slaves and, and the democracy. In slaveocracy, one person had all the power. In democracy, the slaves had power. They resented that. At least in slavery, post-slavery was worse than slavery. What do you mean, I'll tell you what I mean. I'm glad you asked. In slavery, they seldom lynched us because we were their property. We were too valuable. They wanted us to procreate, not, not be hung. Every now and then somebody got hung, got beat, to intimidate the others. But they mostly wanted us to procreate and have more workers for the field, like, like, cattle, like cattle, like animals. But when we got free, between 1880 and 1950, there were 4,000 plus lynchings. Beheadings, mostly at the church on Sunday. They dress up women in their bonnets and little children held hands and men in their hats and hang us on trees in front of the church community in the name of God. And WACP was found to make lynching illegal. They were fighting for the right to make lynching remain legal. If you think it's over, a group in Baltimore called thugs, a group in Waco, Texas called bikers. <laughs> I thought y'all may miss that. Man, can you imagine in Baltimore our children who are one kid came, he said, Reverend said, like I got in the joint because I was smoking the weed, and then I got in the jail with the weed, with other brothers smoking the weed, and then I couldn't vote because I'd been in jail, then I couldn't get a job because I'd been in jail, so where am I going? He'd been pushed out the system. So he decided to, he decided to destroy nothing again. Here's some grown men, educated men, businessmen, bold enough to take off their suits robes and put on their jackets, come riding down the highway with guns. No one called them a name. Thugs and bikers. Those who led the lynching parties maintained their dignity because we got free but never equal. When slavery was over, the infrastructure remained in place. They kept the banks. They kept the education, they kept law. They, when we got free, we only got, we got free from barbarity and incivility, not free indeed. Why do we go to Silicon Valley? Sam Reed and Willis said and went to the banks. That's where the money was. Albert can buy Greece today. Why do we go to Silicon Valley? Because we over index in Silicon Valley. We're about 42% of 
Twitter, black and brown. Call it black and brown Twitter. Members of the board of directors, zero. Employment, 2%. 189 top board members in top 20 companies. 189, 36 white women, three blacks and one Latino. Apple, zero. Facebook, zero. That's where we're going to share all those meetings next week. Zero. Google, zero. And yet, the incorporator of the papers of Zugo was a young black lawyer named David Drama. Chairman of the board of Microsoft was John Thompson, Florida A&M. 189 board members, 36 black, three Latinos, one, one Latino. Do we have an insult level? If you're not insulted, you'll never fight for dignity. One thing worse than slavery is to adjust to it. And what's worse than that is made like it don't matter. I say one thing worse than slavery is to adjust to it. And what's worse than that is made like it don't matter. We expect slave masters to lead slave revolts. You expect those who control our pension funds to lead the revolt? I wish I wasn't here by myself. I know it's early on Friday morning. <laughs> on the C-suites, 370 members, three blacks and three Latinos. Investment startup company is zero. We're changing that. Why can't we get a thousand churches to have tech labs in all the empty Sunday school space during the week? Our kids can learn apps and codes. We might have had an opportunity. We were arguing a case not long ago about blacks in prison having to spend five dollars a minute to make collect telephone calls back home. Parents can't afford to accept a collect call and can't afford to, to turn it down to feel somebody having their child. We couldn't figure out how to make the big companies act right. One of those kids in jail. Guess what? Guess what he did, Bill? He developed an app where you could call through internet and reduce the call to zero. He had the chance to be creative. Talking about Silicon Valley now. Another kid, been in jail three or four times for breaking in cars. He developed, developed a scheme where you can't break in cars. He knows how, how you can't break in them because he knows how to break in them. We got Facebook last week to raise the minimum wage to $15. Google 15, we must demand that every, every Silicon Valley company have a minimum wage of $15 at the minimum. We did that last week. Silicon Valley is not just STEM and engineering, it's 70% non-tech. Have drivers. Security workers, secretaries, cooks, janitors. 70% of Silicon Valley is non-tech. So we got Intel to put up $300 million, $100 million to lock up, the hook up between Silicon Valley and black colleges. They said, we can't find no uh, black engineers out here in Silicon Valley. You find apples where you plant apple seeds. So if, if, if blacks can't get in USC and blacks can't get in, in, in Berkeley, then they don't produce engineers. Look, at the engineers go to Tennessee State, go to A&T, go to Howard, go to Hampton, go to Mohouse, go to Florida, and go, go, go where, they, where they plant seeds. Now we're hooking up to Lacan Valley and black colleges. STEM education, go where they teach STEM education. We don't live between Silicon, between San Francisco and Palo Alto. We live between, between New York and Mississippi and back across this border. It's where we live. We must lead that struggle. That's, I'm trying to make that case today. We have too little action, two sets of rules. Why do we do so well in football? And, you know, to be the best basketball player in the world is, is tough. Everybody wants to shoot the hoop. 
why are we so good at that? Say whenever the plan veil is even and the rules are public and the goals are clear and the referee is fair and the score is transparent, we can win. I challenge us today to fight back. Labor without action is like a lion without teeth. Like a jacuzzi without moving water. Like kissing through a telephone. <laughs> if we lose the fight, at least go down with dignity. You mean we can go from a bloody bridge in 65 to the White House? No, there's nothing we can't do. Sin is not in feeling. Sin is not in trying. You close rank found 84 camp, and they thought it was a joke in 84. We broke the psychological ceiling. We broke out the box. We tried something. President Barack said to me one time, he said, you know, I was a student at Columbia when you were debating hard in Mondale. And I said to myself, this can happen. Is that not the point for our children to believe this can happen? If we, go, if we have a, an economic summit in Detroit, but all that labor history in Detroit, 100,000 vacant homes and abandoned lots in Detroit, no chain grocery stores in Detroit, no, train, no chain drug stores in Detroit, one man, Gilbert from, from, uh, uh, from the uh, Quickie Loans, now owns 74 downtown buildings in Detroit, facing a $500 million lawsuit because of treacherous lending practices. Why can't we go back to Detroit and have a summit meeting? Put forth an urban agenda. Let us summon HUD. Summon the Department of Labor. Summon of SBA. Summon skilled job trade training. Summon the capacity. 100,000 houses are vacant lots. Moving, moving window panes and putting in, moving boards and putting in window panes and, and removing lead paint and painting. Putting folk back to work, giving them a sense of dignity. That's who we, that's who we are. I don't think folk who are living in the suburbs of Washington are going to think like this. I don't think our brothers of other mothers are going to think like this. And I think that's because we need this. So somebody, somebody better speak up for those who are locked down. I saw an interesting scene today, and I'll let you go. As I made this appeal, Mr. President, on this issue about the Detroit something. We were in Detroit the other day, and, and J.P. Chase is putting in $100 million. So they want to do something. City so Council wants something. Met some state reps in Detroit. They want to do something. Everybody kind of looking. Why can't we convene these? Why can't CB to you convene the summit meeting in Detroit? Yeah. Not march on Washington. That's a parade. They got used to that. <laughs> Detroit, Chicago, Baltimore. Why can't we march on our own neighborhoods and rebuild them? But Reverend B. Realism, where is the money? About 10 trillion in offshore tax money. That's where the money is. It's our money. You mean the people, you mean there are trillions in offshore tax money? Yes. A portion of that money to invest in infrastructure and startup capital? You mean as we, as we ally together to rebuild these cities, means you have jobs and job creation and creativity? Why can't we do that? Neither party led the freedom movement. One is closer than the other. It's our dignity we fight for. Deep water does not drown you. You drown because you stop kicking. Say, <laughs> so deep water does not drown you. You drown when you stop kicking.
So we must register and vote because that's our interest to do so. Begin to orient preachers to understand the power of labor in their congregation because, because it's our interest to do so. Begin to teach labor in public education schools because our youth must know that they must live by labor, not by lottery. Teach them that they might know so. Demand the reconstruction of urban America because it's where we live. Our four parents cry out to us today. You'll never imagine we'll be in downtown Hyde in Chicago, sleeping in nice beds at night with our own maids. back home with our own nannies. And maybe some of us have lost touch and we've lost a sense of urgency. I had an experience coming out here today, Bill, it was that, and it touched me in a very deep kind of way. Over our office, there were three men coming down the street and they were dressed in a haggard kind of way. And they, one was pushing a, a cart. They were picking up uh, off the street little pieces of metal so they could take it and sell it, make a little money. And that was a kind of giggle in the car. I didn't giggle because I should do that. I should do that, you know. We would go down the streets and in the alleys and pick up cardboard and flatten them out and sell cardboards and sell coal. 50 cents a basket, wood a dollar for two baskets. Dad had worked at the restaurant, he couldn't go in the front door. Every now and then we need to remember the songs of Zion. We who come from the loins of the struggling masses must act like it. Our hearts must crowd. We're called to lead. We were not brought here to be slaves. We were sent here to save the human race. We have a role higher than being sub sub subjective to oppression. That's who we really are. I know it's dark, but the morning coming. Let's go to Detroit now. Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? I know it's dark, but the morning coming. I know you cry sometime. Somebody taking your job. The contractor got the job, you don't have it. We cry sometimes, but I heard that if you keep on crying and, and don't give up, we've been made and do it for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. It's morning time. Between Egypt and the between Egypt and Canaan, don't turn back. Soldiers are back there. Don't stand still. The waters close again. Go forward by hope and not backwards by fear. And if my people who are called by my name. Not refugees, not immigrants, people called by my name. 246 years of slavery. 5,000 lynchings called by my name. Well, I'm gonna and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways of fear for they will hear from heaven and God will heal their land. It's healing time. It's hope time. God bless you.